Senator Fulton. Senator Nordquist, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President and members. I've said on the first few rounds of debate this is a moral imperative. And Senator Fulton spoke of an injustice, and I think the injustice uh, that comes out of this is that when prenatal care is denied, we know that it's the baby, the unborn child, that bears the full cost of that tragic decision. It's not the person who broke the law to begin with. It's the unborn child, the most innocent of human life. That's where the injustice is. That it's that baby that'll suffer when the mom can't afford to see the doctor, or when the mom doesn't know what medications she can and can't take, or what foods or chemicals she can and can't put in her body, or when she doesn't know how to di manage her diabetes, or when they don't catch a genetic order, a disorder in a timely fashion. That's where the injustice lies, and that's the injustice that this bill will correct. And this certainly is a pro-life issue. We certainly, from a fundamental perspective of respecting that unborn child as a life, but also we've heard loud and clear from all the groups that have been involved. We all received a letter in February 2010 at the beginning of this issue from Right to Life, Nebraskans United for Life, and the Bishop's Pastoral Plan for Pro-Life Activities. And they warned us. They said in this letter, February 2010, we believe this would be a terrible injustice that could do great harm to the lives of children who will no longer receive critical care. What's worse, not receiving coverage for, ca for such care could be a decisive factor in leading to some pregnant women to choose abortion. Therefore, we consider it an urgent pro-life matter for the legislature and the governor to do whatever is necessary to ensure unborn children continue to receive prenatal care. An urgent pro-life matter and not receiving such coverage could be a decisive factor in leading to some pregnant women to choose abortion over childbirth. February 2010. March 2010, from the Omaha World Herald article that says, one pregnant woman at this time opted for an abortion three weeks ago because she felt she couldn't afford to pay for prenatal care. Now we can all sit back and judge whether that was the right or wrong decision, but we heard, we heard the warning in February and we saw the tragic results in March. Now I can't stand here and treat these facts with callous indifference or utter disregard and not take action. And that's what this bill does is it takes action. But not only are we seeing those tragic consequences of a woman, at least one, we've, we've heard other reports, but I don't have the articles on it, choosing to terminate the pregnancy, terminate an unborn child's life. But we also saw that babies have died just because of the lack of care. In July 2011, we saw a Journal Star article that, that identified and itemized some of these tragic situations. Lives are being lost because of this, rightly or wrongly, but lives are being lost, and those are the facts. And I want to clarify the issue in the governor's letter. I know Senator Campbell has looked into it. Maybe if she would yield uh, to a question, um, I'd appreciate that. Senator Campbell, you, will you yield to a question from Senator Nordquist? Yes, certainly. Senator, uh, I know the governor, uh, Senator Fulton mentioned the governor's uh, uh, reference to Planned Parenthood in his letter, and I know your office and, and staff had looked into that issue. Can you uh, relay w what it was that, that your office was able to come up with? Uh, Senator Nordquist, first of all, um, in a contact with uh, Planned Parenthood, they indicated that in the state of Nebraska that they do not provide prenatal care. One of the important things One about minute. the unborn, thank you, Mr. President, about the unborn child option. And that's important for you to understand what option we chose to do. If you look carefully at the bill, the bill has been instructed, constructed very narrowly. That's number one. Anyone, um, we do not cover uh, postpartum care. We do not say in 599 that there will be any family planning. If there is postpartum care involved, it would have to be under a global fee. That means that labor, delivery, mm. prenatal, postpartum, all has to be together in one fee. It cannot be separated. And it has to be done by the same provider. So if somebody doesn't pro provide prenatal care, then they wouldn't be able to receive any of the funds. Is that right? 
thank you senator campbell thank you mr president